Hello, I'm Marika Makula. Um, I met Rachel in art school once upon a time, uh, and I'm now a teaching artist and adjunct professor, and I own a bookstore in Cambridge. So I do a lot of different things. And one of the things I like to do is make puppets. Um, and so I'm just wondering, because I see that we have at least two kids with us today. So how many people here are kids who are under the age of 12? Can you raise your hand so I can see you? Okay, so we're gonna start today with simpler puppets and we're gradually going to get more complex. And just because a puppet is simple to make doesn't mean it's not gonna look cool. Um, as Rachel was saying, part of this is a culmination of being able to use puppets out of doors as a part of a big project. And so the thing about really simple puppets is they're sometimes easier to use outside or to move with or to dance with. Um, so the first ones, which we'll send out a template for at the very end of this, is just a basic herring. Um, now, I took that basic herring and I actually added a little mouth onto it. So this one also talks. Um, so this part is just simply cut out of paper and then we have a talking mouth. So what I'll be doing is I'll show you how to fold that talking mouth um, and then you can always add it onto a body. And a puppet like this, it's nice if you can like fold it and actually make it talk, but it also works really well you can attach it to a string or a stick and hoist it above in the air as well if you want to do a dance with it. Um, in addition to herring and thinking about herring, another thing that's really important to the river system are freshwater eels. And um, if you have questions about this, we can ask Rachel those. Um, and so I also have some eel puppets that have been made. And so this part is the very top of a egg carton container. Um, so it has a really good shape. And then we have the eel paper. And this one's been painted and I also have some recycled pieces on it that I'm reusing. Um, and these are those netting bags you get when you buy like sweet potatoes or onions. Um, and they make a really nice texture. This one was actually painted through that. So you get a nice scaly texture and then has little pieces attached to it. Um, and the reason I put those little pieces on it is because when you have them on a stick and you hold them above your hair, your head to dance with them, they move really beautifully. And so one of the things that we think about when we make puppets is what are they going to be used for? So a puppet like this is really fun if you want it to talk or you want it to say something. And a puppet like this is going to be really fun if we're going to move it and use large gestures and dances. Um, and so that's one of the things that I like to think about with puppets is how are we going to use them and interact with them with our bodies. Um, and you can see here are a couple other eels too. So this one has newspaper on it and some sequins that sparkle. And this one has drawings with crayons. Um, so you can make puppets with just paper and pencil really, really easily. Um, so there's one other type of puppet that I would like to show you before I start showing you how to make some puppets. And these are actually, Rachel made these. They're the beginnings of puppets. So here we have this beautiful tube of fabric, which will get a tail on it and a head on it. And this is sort of the mouth right here of the fish. And so this is a nice fabric puppet that involves sewing. And you can see that on this one, she started painting out So something like this would be really nice up on a stick with wind going through it. You could even put it on the back of your kayak um, so that it catches the wind as you paddle. And that would be really fun if you have a bike you want to adorn with it. Um, so again, thinking about where we're going to be using these puppets and how we can use them in real time. So the first type of puppet that's the simplest kind is something like the eel puppets that I created, where we're just going to be cutting things out using paper. So do people have supplies with them? in front of them, yeah? Okay, so if you have supplies with you, let's start getting those out. And if you don't, you can scrounge around your house and see if you can grab some paper, just some eight and a half by 11 paper is fine. If you have some newspapers, I like to reuse like the materials for packing that come in all of the things that get delivered to my house. Um, so like my roommate gets packages and I use those. Um, you can also like just grab your recycling bin and see what's in there. Um, because for something like this, these pretty spots were actually made using bubble wrap, which is an awful thing, but people use it. Um, and so we can reuse things like that as a part of making puppets. Um, so the first thing you're gonna need to do with making a puppet 
is you're gonna to need to make some sort of a shape of a body. Now, if you wanna make an eel, eels are very long. So we're gonna need a long strip of paper. This one is about the length of my arm. I would say it's about two feet long. And so for that, I can take a long piece of paper and my scissors, and I can just cut a long, narrow strip out. If you wanna make an eel, that's one way to do it. If you're thinking about maybe making a fish instead, you can take your piece of paper. I'm gonna use some nice brown paper that I had. So if you have like old grocery bags, this is a great use for them. Um, and what you can do is you can draw the shape of your fish and then cut it out. Um, and it's really great if you, there's some great references as to what herring look like. Um, on the resources that Erwa has. And you can use those if you wanna specifically make a herring. Um, so that's one of the things that I did as a part of this puppet workshop was I looked into what do freshwater eels look like in Massachusetts? And what do the herring look like that live in the rivers um, in Massachusetts? And so that for me was a lot of fun because it wasn't something that I'd done a lot of research in before and making the puppets was a good excuse into examining that. So I'm gonna make a pretty big fish, but if you want to, you can make little tiny fish too. Um, it could be really fun to have a bunch of little tiny herring attached to a large stick that move around. Um, it's all about what size puppet you wanna have. You can even make a puppet that's really small and stick it to yourself so that you have one on your shirt or on your back. Um, and that can be fun. So you can take your pencil and draw your fish um, we'll also be sending out templates later on. And then once your fish is cut out, then becomes the fun part of how do we want to decorate this. So Rachel mentioned that there's a bunch of nature walks that are associated with this. And so one of the things you can do on nature walks is gather materials to use later on for decorating your fish. So you can take leaves and you can paint them and print with them. Um, and I can show you how to do that in just a moment with some other materials. You can also gather leaves and cut them out and tape them on or, or glue them on. So I could take my fish and glue my leaves on. So maybe I wanna have a leaf that is a fin and that can be really fun because it's just a beautifully colored leaf. And that's an interesting way to incorporate the actual out of doors and things that have been grown and are a part of the ecosystem of these watersheds directly into your puppets. Um, so when you're going on those walks, think about what shapes are interesting, what colors are interesting, what you find on the ground that you might want to include. Um, you can also think that a lot of times when you're looking down in the water, fish and eels will use all of the detritus on the bottom to kind of camouflage themselves, right? And so using those ad actual detritus um, and all of those leaves and things that they're normally hiding with on your puppets relates them back to the river. So. Once you have your fish cut out, it's time to start decorating it. And there's a ton of different ways you can do that. Um, you might wanna go a method of using crayons and markers that you have at home. Um, I had a really good time when I worked on this eel. I actually looked up what the patterns look like on freshwater eels. And so this is sort of an abstracted pattern that you might find on a freshwater eel. Um, that I did using colored pencils. So you can do that if that's what you're feeling like doing today. If you wanna get a bit more involved and you want a texture that looks something more like this, for this one, you can take some paint and a paintbrush. And for this one, I take a tiny piece of bubble wrap and I put the paint on it like this. And then you can just print it directly onto the paper. So I'm just pushing it down on the paper and I get that texture, which can be a fun scaly texture um, for your puppets. You can even layer different colors if you wanna get a little bit more depth or you want it to look like the fish is moving through the water a bit more. And so for something like this, I'm going to keep painting that piece of bubble wrap. So I'm just painting the side with the bubbles on it and printing it down. 
Now, another way to print using paint on your puppets is one that I showed this eel. Um, and that one is using the bags from produce. So I have one of those here from a bag of sweet potatoes. And so you can easily just cut a piece off of that. I always like to collect interesting things that I find when I have my recycling bin. I have like two recycling bins. One is things to reuse in puppets and making things. And the other one is things that I actually can't reuse and have to recycle. Um, and I'm always trying to make sure that they're more in the reuse than in the recycle. So now that I have a piece of the netting, which you can see there. So for that one, I'm actually gonna put it directly on my fish puppet. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna dab the paint on. And that's gonna allow that to come through. So I'll put that down and show you what that looks like. So that gets a texture, something like that. And so you can play around with different materials that you might find and what sort of textures you can get from them because those are not the only kinds of textures that you can get. You might find that you have an interesting plastic container or um, styrofoam and you can paint over that and use that to print. Um, and those are just some really nice ways to get interesting textures on the things that you're creating. And the reason why I love texture when it comes to creating puppets is that if we're gonna be dancing with these and moving with them, we get a sense of movement when we have those textures, uh, which can be really great. So you can keep going with your puppet, adding some layers. I also highly recommend using different colors to create the fins and tail. So I could, if I wanted to, I have some white pieces of paper and I'm using a brown one. I could cut out some fins to put on. And if I want to attach the fin so that it actually like pops up and can even sort of wave, I can just fold the top over like that. So you can see it's folded over. And I can put a little bit of glue on there. Glue stick right here. Um, glue sticks are great. Elmer's glue is awesome, especially with a brush. And if you have um, a hot glue gun like this, that can also be really, really helpful um, if you're doing something quick. But now that I have that glue, the glue is applied right here on that little strip there. Let's see if I can get a little less sunlight directly on this for you guys. So once I have the glue there, I can take my fish puppet and I can glue that little fin right on. So now it sticks out, providing it with some movement. And I can even put that on the front and the back. So that if I take my fish and I put a piece of string here and have it on a stick, it looks interesting from both sides. So once the paint dries on this side, I might turn it over and put some designs on this side as well so that we have I'm going to add a little bit more texture to this guy because I really like the bubble wrap texture for this one. Uh, I could also, if I had leaves, do the same thing that I'm doing with the bubble wrap for the leaves. So you can take a leaf and you can paint it and then push it down. And you can also glue the leaves on. Um, so what I might do now that I have my little fin on there, is I could take a leaf and glue it directly onto this side so that the leaf actually sticks up a little bit. And that will look very cool. The other thing that I would recommend doing, um, which you don't have to do for your puppet, it depends what kind of puppet you wanna have. So there are two kinds of puppets. We could have a fish puppet that looks very realistic so one that maybe doesn't have a face or eyes that are gonna emote a lot. Or we can have a puppet that is a little bit more um, 
sort of Muppety. So it's gonna be talk a little bit more and might have more of a character. And if you wanna do something like that, you may have noticed that my eels have a little googly eyes on them. Um, so they're a little bit sillier. So if you wanna add, now that I have some texture on my fish, I can decide that maybe I wanna give it an expression or a face. Um, and so I might wanna go a little less realistic with that and actually give it an eye. I'm gonna paint a little bit. I'm also gonna shoot some paper. Put out an eye to glue on. Add a little eyeball. I easily just took that and added a little eyeball on for him and a little mouth. So you can make an expression on your fish if you wanted to have more of an expression um, or you could make it more realistic, but it is fun to sort of add that. And I think that making sure you have eyes at least, even if they're more realistic eyes on your fish is really good because people respond to things that look a little bit like them. So giving it eyes makes it look like the fish is seeing you. And so when you're playing with a puppet where there's eyes, people will interact with the puppet rather than interacting with the puppeteer, which is always really interesting and fun to play with. Um, and it also draws attention to the fact that fish are like us in so many ways and require um, ecosystems that are healthy, just like we do. So for the talking fish, when we do get to it, for that one, you will need an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, that's kind of, that's integral to having that. So if you've been using scrap paper or recycled paper, if you just, you can easily just cut it down to eight and a half by 11 if you don't want to use like a pristine piece of paper, which I totally understand and highly recommend recycling or reusing paper that you already have. Um, so you can definitely take one of those. And that, and we'll use that to create the talking fish. I also wanted to mention about these eels that I created. So the top of the eel here is part of an egg carton. Um, so I like to keep my egg cartons and the ones that are not sprouting little seedlings for my garden. Um, these make really good heads. They're just a really good shape. And the fun thing about that is that like, I can stick a stick through the top of this and easily move it around if I wanna have a puppet on a stick. Um, but I can also just stick my finger in it and have it move around. So for example, you were talking about how you, you know, you have a whole story with your eels and this eel family. And so if you wanted to actually be able to have like finger puppets with them, uh, using an egg carton is one way to do that is you can have them move around really easily. Um, and so that can be really fun. Um, you can also take a chopstick if you have, you know, when they give you those non-reusable chopsticks at uh, takeout places, you can stick that through here. And that's a great way to have it on a stick so that it moves around as well. So just all the materials that you already have around the house that you can reuse, I always recommend doing that when you can. Um, you can also even use a pine cone as sort of the face or the mouth of that if you wanna do that for an eel puppet. Um, and this one has like a flatter nose from the egg curtain. And then, I would, so this one also, I was using newspaper so that it has a really fun movement when it flies around. Um, and then some sequins that I found. So really like going into your sewing basket, seeing what you have. Um, with the beautiful fabric ones that Rachel made, it could be really fun to add acorns or little bells or buttons or beads to have those reflective qualities about them. Um, and that can be really, really fun. Or if you have like old glow in the dark stars or pieces of paper, putting those on so that if you're using doing a puppet show at night, they catch the light or they draw people's attention to them. Um, so I had a request for learning how to do that face. Um, and so I'm gonna, I can go over that now if people are interested, if you wanna put aside you're welcome to keep going on the puppet you're working on if that's what you want to do. Um, but if you would like to learn how to fold the chatty head, which looks like this, um, I can teach you how to do that right now. 
And for that, you're going to need an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So here's my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Ooh, we've got some color paper going on. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do, and if you've been, if you're in school, you probably know this, we're going to fold it hamburger style. So hamburger style makes a sheet like this. So we're going to fold it in half and then I want you to really crease that top crease. And then you have that fold it in half again this way. Okay, and then you're going to open it up so it looks like this. So right now you want your fold on the top. That's important. So the fold should be on the top of that piece of paper. Okay, and now we're going to take one corner and we're going to fold it down so it meets that middle line right there from that crease that you made. You're gonna fold down one side to that middle crease and then you're gonna fold the other side down to that middle crease like that. Oh. Okay, so once we have both of these folded down, we have both these folded down. Want to crease those? Then you have this part at the bottom here. So we're going to fold that up and crease it. And then we're going to flip it over. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So now we have like a hat, right? We've just made like a little tiny paper hat. Yeah, it's the. Okay, so we have our hats. We're gonna open them up and we're gonna flatten them like that. Yeah, I'll show that to you again. So we have our paper hats. We're gonna open them up and flatten them like that. And now when you try to flatten them, you're going to have these funny little things right here. And for those, you just tuck them in. So I'm going to tuck that one under this one. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to tuck this one under that. So I have this. Yeah, it looks like you, it looks like you guys are getting it. Okay, so once I have this, we need to make some crease marks to make the next step a little bit easier. So we're gonna take this part down here and we're gonna fold it up there like that. And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side.
then once you have that creased, you're gonna unfold it again. So it looks like this. Oh, it just got big. <laughs> so now at this point, we're like this. We're gonna kind of push it open. Like that, and fold down that middle flap. This is the tricky part. This is like the hardest part of it. So I'm gonna go over that again. It's hard to see. So. Ah. Hard to go back. So we're here. We're gonna fold those sides up and pull it open like this. So you can see that's the inside. That's the front. And then there's this pesky thing in the middle here and we're gonna fold that down so it's flush. And then you have your fish face. And this is the hardest part of the whole thing. So I'm gonna go over that again because it's very confusing. So we were here and then we fold it up both sides. Then we open it up. And then we take this little middle part that's annoying and we fold it down like that. So then we have our fish face. If anybody needs help with that last part and wants me to show it again, let me know and I can show it again because that is the trickiest part of it. And if you were able to do it, you can hold it up and show me so I can see. But the thing I miss the most about doing workshops in person is being able to see what everybody is doing. That's the hardest part about doing Zoom workshops is not being able to see that. Do you fold it to the left or the right? Is that what you do or you fold it? It doesn't matter which one, which direction you fold it. So again, we were... <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking to her? Yes, I am talking oh, to her. <laughs> are you here, right? Are you here at this point? I mean, yes, I was there. Now it's like all messed up now. <laughs> Once you're here, it helps to crease it up this way. Yeah. Up the other way. You can also fold it in half this way to kind of okay. crease it. Mm, I'm going to have to do another one. Paper. Okay. You want me to go? I'll go through the beginning steps with you so you can see that again. <laughs> Because yeah, this is this is why I wanted people to get started on puppets first. So if there are people who for whom this was like a little bit tricky, they would have something to do for this part of the workshop. Because I wasn't sure what our age range was gonna be. Um, okay. So we're starting oh, with our half. Start over. So I did I did a half, right? Okay. We did it halfway that way. And then I and do fold it half. Right? And right? Yeah. And then we open it up. Yep, did that. And then you fold down. So the fold is now on the top here. Yep. So now like you're making, like yeah. you're making so a paper. down the corners okay. to that middle line that you created. Yep. Like that. Mm-hmm. Did that. And then you fold up. Yep. That added piece of paper. Yep. <laughs> and then you flip it over and you fold that piece of paper up as well. Mm -hmm. So now we're at the hat stage, the little yep. jaunty hats that we can wear. Um, so once we have this, we open it up yep. and we flatten it so that it becomes a square. Yep. And with these pesky little things, we just tuck one in under the other. Yep. Okay. So okay. now it can be helpful to crease it this way. Crease it which way? Let me see. Okay, it's like this. <laughs> yeah, so you crease it that way. And then you also want to take this bottom part 
uh -huh. and fold it up this way. Okay. And then you're gonna flip it over and do it on the other side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So cool. now it opens, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. On the bottom. Yeah. So we're gonna open it in the bottom. So that's the yeah. inside. This is the outside. Mm -hmm. So now in here, you can see we have like a little top piece and a bottom piece, and then this yes. like almost like a tongue piece, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. That tongue piece. Yes. We're gonna wrangle sideways. So we're gonna kind of pull it together. Oh. And then push it to the side like that. So are the two flaps like this? And then you go like I can't. Let me see if I can. Who's so who's speaking to me? Oh, there you are, Mia. Okay. Yeah. So the two flaps are like. Let me let me go back a sec. Let me in so Okay, so here's my triangle, right? So these are the flaps, right? Yes. Okay, so we're at, let me. I think this is the yeah, part. So those are flaps, yeah. So you have those flaps. So pull the flaps so that the flaps are up and then open the bottom part. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then once that bottom part is open, you can kind of like stick your fingers in it. Yes. Okay, good. So now we're gonna pinch that middle part. Uh huh. Top. Yep. And that's the part that we're gonna fold down to the side. So oh, okay. that middle part. Yes. And then I'm gonna fold it down to the side. Got you. <laughs> it's a it's a tricky one. It's like that is the hardest step in the whole thing, and you're like, why is this so hard? It doesn't make why sense. Is this so, it's always that last. It's always that last fold because if you don't, yeah. And then oh, have, oh, I see. I get it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a one that's like you see this when it's finished, and you're like, oh, that won't be that hard to make. And then you the engineer it and you're like, I didn't understand how that was like that is so difficult. Um, so for that flap, it might just stay tucked in, but you might want to like glue it down. Um and then for the puppet that I made with the snapper, I took, so this is, you can see my triangle part. Yep. So I actually took a piece of paper that I cut out to make a herring body uh -huh. and I glued it on the back. So you can see like if it's flat, it's like that. Yeah. So I just glued the top and the bottom. Okay. And I left a little bit extra here because when the head moves, it needs a little area for it to move in because it these points actually move away from each other. So there's a little extra distance that needs to be there so that it doesn't rip the puppet. Gotcha. Um, so then I have it like this and I can talk with it. Yeah. And you can see Funny. that little hole that ends up there. Cool. Yeah. And if you wanted to get really complex with this and the great thing about outdoor events is that you can have puppets like up on sticks to do dance with, dances mm -hmm. with. So A, people can see them and B, so they don't get in the way. Right. And you could actually make it so that you could have a string that would open and close the mouth. Um, so if you put the bottom part on a stick, so like I could just take my paintbrush stick and like if I had this part on a stick, uh -huh. I could then take a little string and attach it at the top here to the mouth. Oh, and then pull oh. it up and down. So it can talk even if I have it up high. Wow. So that would be one way of like, if you wanna have your puppet talk or sing right. as a part of a dance, you can do it that way. Um, and that can be really fun because otherwise, I mean, it's really fun to have it here too. Cause then you can talk to people, especially if there are kids around and you're a grown up. Like, yeah. It's easy to have your fish talk to people, um, but if you want it to be kind of up above and still have those moving elements, that's one way to do it. Huh? I must have. I must. I have like heavy duty paper, so it's probably not the best. It's like magazine paper, so it's not um, moving the way I want it to move. But I'll figure it out. I'll figure it yeah. out. Once you do the first one, the second one becomes a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it might be this kind of me. Me so hard for me. So it's like, <laughs> it is a tricky one. That's why I wanted there to be multiple yeah. 
options for types of puppets. Right. It's what, yeah, what you're, what you're into. You could also fold it out of um, a more basic kind of paper and then even cut pieces of paper and glue them on. Oh, that okay, be really cool. fun because you could cut it out of the, you could make the first one out of whatever color paper you want for the mouth. Yeah. And then you could glue the outside on. So if I wanted to, I could even print a bunch of paper with one of my materials. So like maybe I want to use my bubble wrap to print some paper. Yeah. I can print that paper and set it aside. I can let it dry. Then I can take it back when it's dry and cut out those pieces and just glue them on right here. Cool. Um, and that would be a way to get what you want. So like you were saying, you were using magazines. So it might be really fun to get like a National Geographic or something yeah. and cut out actual like schools of fish or if you can find some photos of a river those can be really good if you yeah or if you have for example like even old pamphlets from local Farming. organizations yeah. like from oh, Irwa or something like that you could cut it out and use that yeah um, it could be really fun and then there's also the story behind it so you can say like well this fish is printed with you know this river or like this is a fish of rivers from around oh. the world um and so I'm a big fan of thinking of like, there's a lot of storytelling in puppetry, whether you're actually moving the puppet and telling a story, or there's the story behind the art object. So, you know, mine, I used a lot of recycled goods because for me, like, I like the story behind that and the meaning behind that. Thank you. So I now have, for example, like I have some National Geographics and I can easily say like, that's really cool as a texture. I'm gonna use that. Like, so, yeah, it looks like um, fin, not fins, but um, um, scales. Uh, scales. Yeah, or even this. This is like shipping. Mm -hmm. That can be like a really good texture for what I'm working on. Um, or maybe I just find images of water and I just cut out different bodies of water, and then I have a fish that represents water from around the world, which yeah. is water that could have been here at one point because of the water system. And to me, that's a great story and has a great meaning. And so that could be really fun. Um, so really thinking about when you go into making a puppet, you can make a fun fish and see what happens, but you can also have more meaning behind that puppet mm -hmm. um, and have a story. So you can always think about that too. Um, uh -huh. So Kendall's on the Facebook. And she's suggesting that uh, if you're doing this with kids, then the older kids could make the mouth and the younger kids could make the body of the fish to produce more fish. And um, if you're using images from magazines or anything like that, uh, that's also a good way to get the camouflage of the animals because often you'll see animals blend into their environments very well. So you can actually use photographs of those environments and you'll get a, a pretty realistic effect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. And I love the, what you said about the camouflage. Um, and that's also true of when you're picking up those natural things when you're out for a nature walk. If you're picking up good sticks to stick your puppets on, but also leaves and other detritus that actually ends up at the bottom of a river um, you can use that on your fish to create that camouflage effect as well. Yeah, and I I will say so if you're if you're working and you want to show me what you've been creating, I always love to see those either on your video if you're in the Zoom or if you want to post photos and tag us. Um, you can definitely tag Irwa because we love to see what you create. Um, and personally, like my favorite part of workshops is seeing that. And again, it's always harder on zoom and I'd love to see what people come up with and looking to see what other people are making or have made is a great way to get ideas on your own for example that idea about creating the camouflage with the photos that you're using is a great idea um, and that's definitely one that you can borrow and use on your own puppets um, and so you can also have multiple different ones uh, one of the things to think about is how are your puppets going to look when you actually move them around and use them um, and so one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot is, you know, I was talking about how you could put this on a stick and make the mouth move. Or if you have a bunch of these eels, maybe you want to put them on strings. So make a little hole in the front, 
tie the string in the back and then you tie them all to a stick and then you have a bunch of them that are following after you. Um, and that can be a really fun way to do something. You could also then put it on the back of your bike if you're biking around or you know, do different things with your puppets. Are there any other questions um, about any of the puppets that I've shown you or especially about making that head? I'm happy to answer those if anyone has questions. Oh yeah, I'm getting to see some in the corner of the Zoom. So one of the great things, yeah, oh, look at that with the paint. One of the great things about Zoom is that you can actually create a puppet show really well on your own. So in addition to having these dance opportunities, um, using Zoom itself to create a puppet show, it's really easy to put yourself out of the frame and then play with a puppet. So I can easily just step to the side and have my puppet wander into the frame. And so you have sort of this ready-made theater um, that's made by the Zoom window. And so playing around with that once you have some puppets can be a lot of fun um, if you want to create some puppet shows that way. And it's a way to share your puppet shows with other people. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is all of the puppets that I've been making are relatively small because it's easier for you to see them right now but you could very easily take a very large piece of paper and make a big one. Um, so, you know, I have a bigger piece of paper. I can make a fish that takes up the entire size of this. Or if I want to take a really big box, I can make a puppet of that size. Um, so one thing that I'm going to show you, talk about briefly is using boxes to make bigger puppets. Okay, so for example, we got this huge box here. Um, with a lot of cardboard. And so I can actually use this to create a tougher, bigger, um, bigger puppet if I want. Um, so it's easy enough to kind of pull off pieces. Okay, so now I have this big piece of cardboard. cardboard. So the great thing about the paper that we've been working with is that the paper has movement. So when I hold it up, it really moves around well. So the cardboard is nice because it does the opposite thing. It's really tough and it stands up. So if I'm holding up a puppet and I'm dancing around, this isn't going to be moving as much. And so there's different things that I can do with it. Um, and so for this one, it might be easier if you're, if you're a parent with children, um, it might be easiest if you have your child draw the fish on here and then have and then cut it out with a box cutter or an exacto knife um because that's going to be a little bit easier to get through the cardboard than cutting with scissors um but if you are older or an adult or a preteen or someone who is totally capable of using a box cutter or an exacto knife you can just use that to cut out the shape of your fish or your eel um because it is just much tougher to cut through these things so Anna on Facebook is making mommy fish and a baby fish. Oh, so we were just, Rachel just told me that we have a mommy and baby fish that are being made. So just like we had those, that eel before, um, and then little baby fish and a whole family of eels. Um, I like the idea of us having all the families. So maybe you also want to create sort of an alter ego for everyone in your family and make you as an eel or a fish and then everyone in your family. Um, and then you can have a whole family. So if you're using the cardboard to create a puppet, it's going to be tougher and bigger. And it's going to be really great for holding above your head while you dance, because it's easy to like put this on a stick and move it around. Um, you could even draw your river on here and then put your different little puppets attached. So if I wanted to, I could paint this as my river and then attach my eels to it rather than holding them up. And so if it's like a really windy day, this is gonna be a better way for me to show my puppets, um, depending on what the day of the event looks like. Do you have any more questions about puppets? I 
have a question. Go for it. Do you have any tips for making the smaller paper puppets a little more three dimensional, like stuffing them or I don't know, any thoughts about that? So, so do you want to specifically do a smaller paper puppet or are you interested also in working with fabric that if you're doing a smaller puppet? I'd rather not work with fabric because I don't really sew. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. you know, like I was thinking if I worked with like a heavy grade of paper and stapled the edges, could I stuff it with a little bit of newspaper or something to give it a little bit of body shape? If, I just wondered if you'd thought about that at all. Yeah, so there's actually a really, <laughs> when I was a kid actually, uh, we did this a lot in our class. So what you can do is you can basically make two sides and I can just show you really quickly, I'll just. Um, So I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I'm gonna fold it in half. So you can obviously make one bigger than this, um, but this way both sides of my puppet are gonna be the same size. So I can cut out my fish and I'm gonna make it a little bit fatter in width than I would otherwise make my fish puppet because it needs to be able to like, think about it this way. If these are the two sides and we stuff it, it's gonna come out like this. And so it's gonna end up getting shorter as the sides come out to create that dimensional space. So I'm gonna cut out the body and then I think I would add like fins and whatnot afterwards. So once I have my body, you can staple around the edges using a stapler um, and then leave like this area open. And then you don't wanna use too heavy of a, of a paper because it's not gonna be able to expand um, so I wouldn't use, um, I wouldn't use like cardboard or card tag. I would use just like a brown paper, like a grocery bag or something like that. Even better, if you have any of those shipping envelopes that are made out of mylar, you know how sometimes you get those like plastic shipping sleeves? Those are perfect for this because they'll hold up to changing in shape. So they're really easy. You can draw them with a Sharpie, cut them with scissors and then staple around the edges. And then you stuff it with newsprint. And the reason you want like newsprint rather than something else is because the newsprint is really soft. Um, and so it will create just like a nice stuffing that you can stick in there. Yeah, I can use that too. You also might, even if you don't have the other ones, if you have like a bubble envelope, that's another really nice thing that'll work. So I can actually, I'll do one for you so you can see how that looks. So I'm gonna plug in my glue gun because I'm gonna, rather than stapling the edges, um, I'm gonna use a glue gun. So glue from a glue gun will, will hold up to the pressure of, um, of, of it pulling apart? So I would probably reinforce the edges as well with maybe like duct tape even, you could do that. Um, I could even use, actually, I'll show you a couple different ways of putting it together. Uh, just so we get all the options depending on that. So this, I'm actually going to use the bottom seam and then just cut fish out here. Okay, so now I have this. I'm actually going to put it inside out because I want this as my base. So we have that. Got some masking tape. You could use any tape, duct tape or packing tape will also work really, really well with this. Would you use the glue gun first? Um, I mean, for this one, like once the glue gun, we gotta let this glue go. You could use both, like glue it and then put packing tape on it or another kind of tape, or you could just um, use the tape. Doing both the glue gun and the tape is gonna hold together the longest. Um, and so that's why that can be really nice. Uh, my glue gun is still heating up, so I just gotta give it a moment. It takes a little while. Um, but in the meantime, I can have this getting ready to stuff it with, just like newsprint that I picked up. Um, the other thing that can work well um, 
while you're waiting for things to like heat up, for example, um, is making paper fins, et cetera, that you're gonna glue onto it. So let's see. Something that can be nice too is like streamers. Um, if you have it on a stick to put some like blue streamers coming down from the stick that feels like the water, you know, currents. That's a great idea. You can also cut your own streamers if you don't have them. Yeah, definitely. Heat them, which can be really nice. So my glue gun's heated up, so I'm just like gluing along the seam. So just putting some glue down and then holding it, pushing it together. And that's actually working pretty well for me. Like the part that I've already glued together is holding up pretty decently. Um, I wonder if it's actually kind of fusing the fusing with the plastic because of the if, heat. If it melts the plastic, it definitely will do that. I just um, I don't recommend doing that just for fume reasons. It's not necessarily good for your health. Um, right. So there are some materials that do that better than others. Um, but just be careful what materials you're you're engaging with in that sense. Just be safe. Um, but yeah, it is like, it's not actually melting, which is great. So I just glued along that entire line. I'm gonna like that. So it goes in the back. And then I can take this print. I know, is the opening what you would consider the mouth or where you'll put the tail? Where I'm gonna put the tail on this one. It could be the mouth. If you want your mouth open, um, you can easily do that. So like for the, if this is the mouth and it's open, I could like cut in to create the shape of that. Um, I could even, I'll show you this. Let me stuff it and then I'll show you this other way to give it even more dimension because I think you'll appreciate that. Let me just stuff this paper. Okay, so now it's, it's a pretty plump little fish now. I could probably get more in there, um, but you can definitely do that. Now, the way to make this even more dimensional is to cut in along the sides here. Like that. And then I have a tapered mouth too. So to do that, I cut the sides. Uh huh. Like a dart. Yeah, like of. a dart. Exactly like a dart. I mean, that's it is what it is a dart. <laughs> right. Um, and then I just fold up the bottom part like this and bring down this part. Uh huh. And then I could just glue that. And then I have a table. Yeah, and it's kind of almost like gills. I guess you could cut it into that sort of gill shape. Yeah. So if I wanted to, I could cut into the gill shape. I could even slice like this. To give it more of that effect if I wanted to, or to give it like some texture and streamers. Um, and then I can just use the hot glue gun again to just pack it down really easily from off the excess. So now I have a very three dimensional puppet. And these, like, if you don't have containers like this, or like you're not getting a lot of things mailed to you. Your neighbors definitely are. Like during the pandemic, your neighbors definitely are. I'm sure they have more than enough and we'd be happy to give you some. Um, and then once I have this body shape, you can really play around with it. So you could put paper on it if you want paper, but if you want something that's gonna hold up a little better, like the great thing about this puppet is right now, if it's raining, I can still have my puppet outside. It's gonna be a little bit more weather resistant. Um, so then I could say like, I want, some fins on it. So we had cut that out and just go ahead and glue it on. And you'll, you'll notice I'm gluing it on at a bit of an angle. So it's a V so that it actually sticks out of my fish. Cool. Um, and that's easy enough for you to do. And then for the tail, again, like, I can have pieces coming up this way, but I could also have them sticking out of the side if I want that, depending on what kind of fish I'm making. So 
I might, like what I generally do is I, I like doing research. So if I'm gonna do another one of these, I might do a research into different fish that live in the river and get a couple of photos of things. And then depending on what I'm drawn to or what I think looks cool, make a fish using that sort of research. So I could then take this, and if I want a three-dimensional tail, stick that on. So you can see that fin. Um, so there are a lot of options with doing something like this. It also acts almost like a stuffy. Um, this particular material, you're not going to want to use like a temper paint on it because it's going to flake off. So using something like acrylic paint is going to be best for painting on this um, because anything else probably won't stay on. Um, and so this one is also because it's got the bubble wrap in it, it's going to have a texture when I paint it. And I can show you that. Um, get some more paint on my palette. Just using acrylic paint that I had lying around the house. So then I can easily just, you can kind of see that bubble texture is coming through when I paint it. Um, so I could choose to do it that way, or I could choose to make very specific marks. So maybe I want to make it some marks on the fins. Like that. Right. Um, again, you were talking about streamers early, which can be a lot of fun to play with. Um, so I could take either paper streamers or like you saw that I had some like sequins that were streamers. If you have ribbons laying around, those can be fun. The real ribbon tends to be heavier. If you have, um, if you've gotten presents recently and you have like some of that like curled ribbon, that can be really great because it's light. Um, and you can even run scissors along it to make it curl and then it looks sort of like bubbles or like waves. And I can also easily take something like this which is another, I think this is a bag of garlic. And I can even have that kind of coming off of my fish, which again is gonna create, like you were saying, movement, also some texture. If you also wanna make statements about nets and fishing or like things that you found in the water, like maybe you have the tops from a six pack of- That's what I was thinking. It could also be about the sort of entrapment, the way fish get trapped in pl plastic netting and debris, right? Yeah. Put a, like put a, a bottle cup in that netting and, and some other little thing and then stick it on there. Very sad, but it, it's true. I mean, you know, a lot of wildlife has been endangered by disposable masks and they get caught in that. So putting that on there to raise awareness about what you're doing. So Rachel says that um, fishing line is a big one at the Irwa Landing. And so thinking about old fishing line, like this is also great if you're going through for a nature walk, you can actually, you know, put on gloves and pick up the degrees, debris so that you're both cleaning up the path and the landing and also using those things that people have left to make a message. So if I had something like this, I could very easily have fishing line dangling from it, wrapped around the end. Um, and that would be both a way that I could clean up a place that I love and care about and a way of then making a statement about it. Um, so we do have a lot of, a lot of options. Um, and I encourage you to just go out and see what you find and see what it makes you think of. Um, I mean, we can also very easily make, for example, like bird puppets. Um, I mean, you could easily take this and do a bird body and then create wings off of it. Um, so like this workshop is about fish, but there are other things that you can do with that. And there are plenty of other animals that we need um, in order to have a complex and um, safe, uh, healthy ecosystem. So all of those things are possible. And uh, herring are a great species to circle that around because with the herring, they're a keystone species. So they're really important for all these other species to thrive in our watershed. So if you wanted to make, say, a Huron puppet or uh, even do a larger fish, like a tuna, or 
I'm heck to a real person, like a fisherman. Uh, you know, we all rely on these much smaller species that make everything else that happens possible uh, because they are the food source for so many others and they're nutrient transporters, which basically means they kind of hang out in one area and help move nutrients from that place, um, in, in this case, out to the ocean and vice versa. So you can bring in a whole ecosystem into one puppet project and have them interact and really show that byplay of how those are related. Uh, for example, bald eagles, which you know we never used to see along the Ipswich River, now we can see pretty regularly. And uh, I, I just love bald eagles because they're such a great example of how conservation can be successful. Um, we, we've gotten used to seeing bald eagles on our river now, and that's thanks to efforts to protect them. So the same thing could happen for herring in our river. Uh, it, it just really takes all of us deciding we want to see them come back. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> I guess that's another thing people could do. They could, um, if their fish is big enough, they could, oh, they could write a message on it they could write a message on the fish or that there could be a little, the fish could be holding a little sign or, you know. It's great you mentioned that. So like, that's what I was talking about with making the big cardboard cutout of like that original fish puppet I was talking about. Like that would be great for having a sign on it. Also, speech bubbles are really easy to make. Um, and I can easily just tape a chopstick to the back and have this come out of my pups, my fish's mouth so that it actually is talking, uh, which is just really fun. And speech bubbles are great because we all know how to read them. Like it's part of visual literacy and like kids these, today are also reading so many comics. And so it's a great way to have a dialogue. Like maybe you have one that says something and then you're holding another one in your other hand that says something else. So they're having a conversation or, you know, the bald eagle is saying, I was, uh, you know, like restoration helped me and the fish can be like, I want this you know, so that you can have a little give and take as well to play with. Marika, have you figured out any way to waterproof cardboard? Like if you make a puppet with cardboard, if you coat it with acrylic paint or something else, is there anything that makes them stand up to weather? So Sm you can make them water resistant. Um, there is a clear acrylic medium, which comes in a bottle. Um, Liquitex makes it. And so you can actually paint it with that. The part that becomes the hardest part is the top of the corrugation. So this part, which is going to allow water in, it's kind of harder to stop those up. So if you take packing tape and put it over that, that's going to really help seal the edges. And then you could either like a spray fixative or finish um, that can help, or you can use um, the clear acrylic on there. Um, so it's not going to be fully waterproof, uh, but it will be much stronger. If you have those old like lawn signs that are the plastic corrugation, those are waterproof. So you could cut your sign out of that or your fish out of that and paint on it with acrylic paint and you're golden. Like that's gonna, that'll stand up. Yeah, so that would be a great way of making something that you can reuse that kind of holds up to all of that. And those plastic lawn signs, they'll take acrylic paint yeah, most things will take like glass will, you can like chip off the acrylic paint, but most things will take acrylic paint pretty well. Um, it's a pretty, that's why I have it in my arsenal because it, it's just like, it works on fabric. It work, it just works on so many different materials. So that's a good one. Oh. Rachel just said that uh, there, somebody said in the Facebook comments, you can make a school of thoughts by having like a bunch of fish with a bunch of little speech bubbles, which would be really fun. Uh, there's so many options. Like I love, I love what's coming out of the comments because I think that like going through those and again, seeing what other people come up with is always gonna be interesting. So even looking at dances from past years to see what puppets people have made then is a really great way of doing things. Um, 
you know, will be like, if you make your puppet, if you want to post it on social media and tag Irwa, that's really great because then we get to see them. Um, if you tag me as well, I'll make sure they get to Irwa and I'll also retag them. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different options with making puppets. And it's also like, how invested do you want to get? What materials do you have access to? Um, I think that you can make puppets no matter what you have around the house. And so it's really like, what do I have without going out and buying things that I can use to create something? Um, because I don't think puppets are not something that you need money in order to make. Like everybody can access that as something they can do. Um, and you also, if you don't have a lot of materials around the house, or for example, like you want some of these envelopes to make something like this with, ask your neighbors. Um, there's probably, sometimes you might also have a place that collects things like that. So I live in Somerville and we have like a shop that, that collects reusable materials that people can use to make things, um, to help people have access to that. So there's a lot of different options. Um, since we are, we have about 15 minutes left. Um, and so I wanted to just say again, I'm Marika Makula. Um, I'm an artist educator. I'm also an author. My first book was Baba Yaga's Assistant, um, which is a graphic novel for middle grade readers. I do a lot of work with um, visual literacy and verbal literacy. So thinking about how words and pictures go together to tell a story. Um, puppets are really fun for me. I do a lot of three-dimensional illustration. Um, that uses whatever I can find in terms of materials. And I'm really excited by the storytelling possibilities of puppets and dolls and three-dimensional figures. Because I think story is one of the ways that we connect. Um, I do, in addition to doing events and, you know, as a guest lecturer or a visiting artist, um, I also go into schools and I talk about visual literacy. I talk about comics I talk about making and drawing comics. Um, and I love doing things like that. I also do that for corporations, for corporate team building, which can be really fun. Um, and so if you have any questions for me about any of that, feel free to reach out. If you have any questions about puppet making or resources, let me know. Um, I think that being creative with what you have and what you can find is the most important thing. Um, and as we can see from everybody's comments, people are doing that already. And as somebody who lives in the city, so like I ran along with Charles yesterday morning, like that's my regular route. Um, it's so easy to go up to Irwa and park and rent a canoe or a kayak and go out on the river. And I highly recommend it. And, you know, again, thinking about systems, which I mentioned earlier, like all of our rivers are connected. They all influence each other. And so the more we can get out and the more we can raise awareness is great. Um, and there's no reason why you can't have, you know, a puppet on the power of your boat with you, or again, like on your bike, this one might hang out on my bike rack for a couple of days just to raise awareness with a little speech bubble. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do that way as well. A great job. Yeah. With the packing tape. That looks awesome. They did cool stuff with the bubble wrap. Where's your bubble wrap one? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks really good. The netting. So cool I ideas. Stuffed my penis and made a little hole. Yeah, I can see that. They've got some really nice ooh, and is that like straw or something on the top it's of grass. it? Grass. It's like dead grass. Nice. That That's a great <laughs> idea. It'll have a lot of movement. Oh, these look awesome. Oh, Ingrid. Bobby. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, the movement too is awesome. Oh, I love it. 